Abdi Nor Iftin has quite a story to tell. He grew up in Somalia, a country ravaged by civil war. In his late 20s, through a remarkable turn of good fortune, he was able to come to the United States and settle in Maine. He tells this amazing story in his new memoir. It's called Call Me American, and Abdi is with us tonight on 207. Thanks for coming in. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Let's go back to your days as a young, as a, as a boy, a teenager in Somalia. You, your life would not have turned out the way it has if you had not taught yourself how to speak English. How did you learn English in Somalia? Well, first of all, um, there was the U United States inter intervention into Somalia uh, because of the uh, humanitarian crisis. You know, there was a famine and there was wars, but then they, you know, the, the U.S. decided to send uh, over 4,000 troops on the ground, and I was in Mogadishu, very close to the airport where this, you know, the U.S. had landed at night. So to me, it was just like a moon landing. You know, it's like the aliens are arriving, right? And the uh, next couple of days, what happened was like, we were, you know, running after, I was like seven or eight years old, and then we were running after the Humvees, you know, with these American uniforms. But the surprising thing to me was, the f it was the first time to see these really neatly dressed people. And they had their guns pointing upwards, and they're wearing all sunglasses, because it's really, really, really hot in Mogadishu. Uh, so I, I tried to communicate with them. They were saying things in English, and we came so close to each other where I could see their eyes, I could smell them. And they were saying some things, and I was saying some things in, in Somali, and we couldn't understand each other, but I was pointing to my belly and saying like, I need something to eat. And then when they left, you know, I'm trying to make the, the, the story very short. Um, and then the war happened, and the Black Hawk happened, and then they left. That's when I thought of, I wish I could communicate with those people. And you watched, started watching American movies. I started watching American movies. Rambo, <laughs> Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you learned English from those action movies. Very true. The, uh, the, uh, it, was a, it was a shack, a little shack, and then a small table with a television on top. And then there was a small pile of, uh, of uh, uh, VCRs, I think that's what's called. And uh, the, the lady who was running the TV shack had only like at least, you know, Commandos and Rambos, just the specific movies. Mm -hmm. And she played them over and over and over every night. And I think that was one thing that helped me, you know, go there every night and to try to figure out, you know, just get to know what they were saying. Your life growing up in Somalia was terribly difficult on a number of levels. Civil war, bombs exploding, bullets flying, people being killed. Uh, Islamists uh, were instituting a very strict form of religion at times. One day, you and a girl you liked went to the beach. What happened? Well, uh, this was the Americanization process, right? And I just wanted to be an American, and I, I was carrying sticks, and I had a bunch of guys behind me, and I was holding this girl in hands, which is a taboo in, 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 in Somalia at the moment. You cannot do that because of the cultural issues, like we're 100% solely Muslims, and we're not supposed to do, to do that kind of Western style in Mogadishu. But luckily, um, the Islamists were not, you know, I, I was a little bit confused, like what would these people do? Um, it was a, a a tough decision for me to go out onto the beach, but then I had been given an experience that I would never ever forget. Um, holding hands, we went to the beach, and she took off all the things that she was wearing, and I said, it feels like Venice Beach, right? You know, it's beautiful, and there we go. And we could get in there, and as we were talking and we were having fun, these guys show up and they started beating us so bad. They whipped both you they, they whipped and the girl you were and with. her, and that was the last time I saw her. If you read the book, w you know, they give her a warning and they said, this is it, next time we're gonna kill you. Yeah. And I was told to come back and that they would give me a, some sort of rehabilitation. <laughs> you know, it's like, come here and we're gonna, we're gonna show you, an, an, you know, how to be a nice guy, a very modest man. So they were just describing that what I was doing was a devilish thing. And I've been devastated and uh, very disappointed. You really appreciated the American culture. You so badly wanted to get to America, and you even had Americans in Maine helping you, trying to help you. Was there a point, though, where you thought, there's no way this is going to happen, there's no way I'll make it? Yeah, um, there, was, uh, th there was one point when I was in Kenya, and that I had, I had the support of everybody, you know, even including U.S. senators that my friends had written to, and they had sent letters to the U.S. Embassy, but the U.S. Embassy 
did not care about all of this. At some point, I had a high ambition. I was like very hopeful, and I said, well, you know, all these letters, I think it's going to make some change. And then I went for an, a student interview, and I have been told, don't even bother doing this because you're a refugee, and a student visa means if you get to the United States and finish your studies, you need to come back, and that's not going to happen. And that was the point where, you know, I gave up and I, you know, my brother and I were just doing some hawking businesses, like, you know, sticking um, hats and socks into the, you know, buses so that people could buy um, in Kenya. And that's how we were making some money. But then we still had the support of the family in Maine. And they were saying, you know what, we cannot bring you to the, to, to, to the United States. That's what they said. We tried it. But let's just send you to school. That's how my brother and I ended up registering for school in Kenya. and. It, somehow my, you know, my, uh, my direction towards the U.S. had shifted a little bit into trying to get a degree in, in Kenya and then try to, try to do something out of myself. Really quickly, you are here, you're getting a degree in poli-sci at yes. the University of Southern Maine. Yes. You're also working as an interpreter for other Somalis. What do you see in your future? Um, I, I'm very, very hopeful. I see a wonderful future for my life. You know, I see that I, I can be someone who can build a, 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 a network of, of, uh, of support. You know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is Somalia is still going through 20, almost 28 years of civil war right now. And I'm trying to do something. That's why I'm just, you know, doing the something related to uh, international and see like how can I be supportful and helpful to the same country that I grew up and my family are still there and what can I do? So that's the way I see my future. A lot of people are calling your story extraordinarily inspirational. Abdi, thanks for coming in. Again, the name of the book is Call Me American. Abdi is going to be appearing at the Portland Public Library and print a bookstore in Portland. Two events, both on Wednesday, June 27th, talking about his life. And we'll be back right after this.